Hello everyone. So welcome to the next session in our uh, Indian Modern History course. And today we'll be starting with Gandhi towards NCM. Now in the last session we have talked about the entry of the Gandhi. We talked something with respect to the background of the Gandhi ji. Then we talked about the Gandhi ji and his experiments in Africa, what he has done, and now he has got ready to go to India, right? So now we'll talk about his journey. Before that, let's solve a few questions. So with reference to Indian, with reference to newspaper published during the colonial rule in India, consider the following pairs, newspaper and editor. So these are the newspapers and these are editors. So Swadesh Mitran, Voice of India, Bengali, Subramanyam Ayer, Mahatma Gandhi and Jatendra Nath Mukherjee. So pause the video and try to answer the question. Now, there is one... Uh, I've already told you that I've put the screenshot of the spectrum book that you can go into that book and the last few and uh, some appendixes appendixes there where there is a list of the uh, leaders and their newspapers right and I told you a few of the things that I'll also cover through questions which are being present in few of the test series okay so these are the three let's discuss these so Swadesh Mitran is of Subramanya Mayer it's true Vice of India is of the Mahatma Gandhi? No. Mahatma Gandhi, very importantly, you need to know that what are the different Mahatma Gandhi newspapers were. So if you know that it's not of Mahatma Gandhi, then these two will be wrong. So you are left with one and three only. So the choices reduce, right? If you know about Mahatma Gandhi and everything about Mahatma Gandhi, even if you don't know everything about Surendra Subramanya Mayer or don't know everything about Jatindranath Mukherjee, like that. So very quickly, we have discussed about the press and everything. So Hindu and Swadesh Mitran were the, under the leadership of the G. Subramanya Mayer. He is an important personality. So just see a few, two to three lines about him, Wikipedia, first page, first paragraph. Then we have discussed uh, Bangali under the Surendranath Banerjee. And then Voice of India under the Dada Bhai Nehruji. So Dada Bhai Nehruji is also important. So you need to know that Voice of India was his newspaper. Stick. So what would be the answer? The answer would be first statement is right. So Deshmitran and the next two will be wrong. So answer will be one only. Next is with reference to reform of the legislative council, which of the following provisions were introduced by the Indian Council Act of 1892. 1892 Indian Council Act introduced which of the following reform provisions. It enlarged the size of the both imperial and provincial legislative councils. The members were given the right to vote and discuss the annual budget. The elections were introduced for the first time. It's a good question. Good question. Why? Because this is basically I've kept on telling right from the start that all these acts from 1773 Regulating Act to Independence of India Act, all the acts are very, very important. And one thing we prepare through the uh, content, just like it came in between the coursework. But more we learn through the or we revise objectively or the retention of this is more when we solve a few questions of it, right? Now, let's say this question. So you can pause the video if you have revised previously, we have discussed everything with respect to 1892 Indian Council Act. Now, if you recall 1892 Indian Council Act, the context lies in the, the moderates demand for the council reform. Moderates believe that councils are a good constitutional ways whose reform is critical if we want to make some progress, right? It was very high on the agenda of the moderates. So 18 Council Act has come. So main provisions, number of the additional members in the Imperial Legislative Council and the Provincial Legislative Council was raised, yes. So both at the central level and at the provincial level, the members were increased. In Imperial Legislative Councils, the Governor General could, would, uh, could have 10 to 16 non-official member, but the official retained their majority in the council. Some of the additional members could be indirectly elected. So the element of the election was introduced for the first time. So the statement number three introduced election was introduced for the first time. It's a right statement. Direct election to legislative council was introduced by the direct election was introduced later on, but election was introduced beforehand. Understood? So direct election, direct election 1909, but the element of election is 1892. Then the members were given the right to discuss the annual budget, but they could have neither vote on it nor move a, move a motion to amend it. They could also ask a question, but the question 
राइट दे कुड आस्क अ क्वेश्चन सॉरी बट वोटिंग नहीं कर सकते तो वोटिंग विच इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट राइट दे कुड आस्क अ क्वेश्चन बट नॉट अलाउड सप्लीमेंट्री क्वेश्चन एंड डिस्कस दी आंसर सो बेसिकली इट वॉज वी हैव डिस्कस सम पावर्स वर गिवन बट मेजर मेजोरिटी ऑफ दी जो इंपॉर्टेंट पावर्स थी दोज वर नॉट गिवन so second statement is wrong they were not allowed to discuss they are not allowed to vote but the first and the third statement is right so answer is 1 and 3 chal now let's talk about today's session first let's discuss so we are continuing the gandhi's journey right so gandhi gandhi ji or gandhi ji same so don't mind it so gandhi's journey in africa we have traced right how he has his two phases we have seen and then finally he when he comes decide to comes back to india enters into india so his journey is going on parallelly here then parallelly we know in india what is happening parallelly we have seen the swadeshi movement moderate then extremist then swadeshi movement we have seen the surat split 1907 surat split then we have seen the crackdown on the extremist tilak and all went to jail and then the period of the political vacuum which is there then obviously world war comes one comes in and world war 1 comes with the two responses first response is of the gadarites and second response basically can be seen in the home rule league right so parallelly these things are going on now what gandhi ji is doing when he comes back to india first thing he does his political guru was gopal krishna gokhale gandhi ji's political guru is gopal krishna gokhale right now gopal krishna gokhale tells him that don't involve yourself in the active politics for now first understand india so that is the what they does a bharat darshan right so during the after the bharat darshan he takes up some small causes that is in champaran ahmedabad and kheda so cake remember c a k e so cake chronologically champaran in bihar ahmedabad and kheda in gujarat he takes up these causes then parallelly parallelly government also government has decided to come up after this home rule league and everything they decided to come up with carrot and stick so carrot and stick carrot is your government of india act or montague reforms and the stick will be the rowlett act so the, there will be protest to this rowlett act and this is how gandhi will be involved now so this is the entry of the gandhi into the mainstream political politics the protest against the rowlett act so more importantly you need to understand this part of the class i'm telling you it's a small 2 to 3 minute time that i spend here but this is the most important time of the class if you are getting everything which i'm saying that means you have revised earlier and you are trying to re- and you can reconnect what i'm trying to say right now so the reactions to the rowlett act came at as a rowlett satyagraha which gandhi has led so this is the rowlett satyagraha i will repeat everything i will repeat everything twice first with the timelines and second with the content but this is what you need to get the story within you so rowlett attack hua rowlett attack ke baad violence started to break out and that was the violence that gripped the amritsar punjab area people will be gathered to protest against the some of the leaders will be taken up for jail people will gather in the jallianwala bagh and then the massacre will happen that the old story and this is how we will leave the today's chapter and then some inquiry will be called obviously when the massacre will be there some inquiry will be there in britain and what were the responses this is all about today's lecture okay so this is the most important part of this session so three parallel stories gandhi story and moderate and extremist story then the two stories will merge thirdly the response of the government what government is doing carrot and stick and everything rowlett attack the protest the gandhi satyagraha then the inquiry upon it and the response so this is how you this is the today's lecture now the next question is what are the expected questions expected questions with respect to prelims are obviously on everything related to gandhi so every moment whether it's champaran ahmedabad kheda then rowlett act questions specific questions on these things rowlett satyagraha then jallianwala bagh so each and everything you can expect questions you can hear expect questions on the individual centric as well for example mr dyer mr udham singh gandhi obviously will be there so a questions you can expect here 
one important question you can expect in the prelims here is chronology based and that's why i'll try to make sure that before every lesson before every class i'll put up a timeline so that we are able to revise with this timeline and also it will timeline will help you to revise yourself later on so chronology is also very very important these are the three, three things with respect to prelims with respect to mains the question can be for example i'll give you question in the next session that ho jaliya wala bag was a watershed right or they can ask you the gandhi in india whole where you have to talk about all the three things champaran ahmedabad and kheda before joining the before getting the leadership of the ncm how gandhi prepared himself in india so this question can come and the question can come with the government approach from 1914 to 1919 ठीक, so these are the three questions, three to four questions you can expect with respect to your means. चल, let us discuss the timeline. So whatever we have discussed, now we'll discuss some relatively in detail, then in complete detail later on. So Gandhi entered into India in nine January nineteen fifteen. That is now celebrated as the Pravasi Bharati Divas. Pravasi Bharati Divas happens two uh, once in two years. So Modi ji made it a biennial event. so that once we celebrate within 2 years but we celebrate it big then may 1915 uh, he set up his ashram that is kochrab ashram and then there was some infestation with the plague was there and that has to be shifted the ashram has to be shifted to sabarmati within 2 years so first ashram is this ashram gandhi's first ashram in india is this ashram then he does a bharat darshan on the recommendation of his political guru that is gopal krishna gokhale ठीक है, then he becomes the champaran first struggle that is 1917, then 1918 you have Ahmedabad mill strike and you have the Kheda Satyagraha. Very important these three things that you have to remember that champaran was the first civil disobedience at a small level, Ahmedabad first hunger strike of Gandhi in India everything is in India, and Kheda was the first non cooperation of Gandhi in India. so these are the three things that you need to remember so champaran that is champaran that is civil disobedience ahmedabad with hunger strike and kheda with the non cooperation you can make code or whatever you want to make cc civil disobedience and champaran ahmedabad and hunger ah hunger h something like that or kheda satyagraha first non cooperation right then then there is a merger gandhi story and the national story will merge so this is a gandhi story this is the national story it will merge here it merges with the raul attack so the representation or the indian response with respect to raul attack can be seen with the satyagraha right first mass strike and the violence that ensues the satyagraha that is or the protest which becomes a bit violent and and the people will be arrested and then later on jallianwala massacre will happen and the government will appoint the hunter committee for inquiry committee or commission for inquiry so uh, october 1990 and this is what our today's discussion will be starting with the gandhi in india so we have discussed gandhi believed that when gandhi came to india what was happening moderate within the moderate and the extremist now the everything is still for let's say this is moderates and this is extremist the move so movement currently was like here home ruling movement it has a relatively less extremist movement because tilak and all tilak has promised that i will not show any this passive struggle and all the passive resistance and all these things we won't do we will try to ensure the simple methods or we will focus more on the political propaganda and educating the people so it was more of a moderate tactics so gandhi was convinced with what we has experienced in the africa that limitation of the moderate politics and was not in the favor of the home rule agitation which was popular at that time where gandhi was entering he thought that it was not the best time to agitate for home rule when british was also in the middle of the power so there were two things that why he was not in the favor of the home rule so what was the first reason first reason was that that he believed that the the way they are doing it it's wrong it's not effective and the secondly that to, currently british is at the moment of the war hence we should not agitate at this time this was also the idea of the moderates and the extremists both we have discussed the response of the world war 1 both by both moderates and the extremist he was convinced that only technique capable of meeting the nationalist aim was a non violent satyagraha he also said that he would join no political organization unless to it also accept the creed of the non violent satyagraha unhone kaha ki unless until you accept the satyagraha i won't join any political 
ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नाउ कम्स द चंपारण सत्याग्रह नाउ मिस्टर राजकुर कुमार शुक्ला मीट्स गांधी जी इन वन ऑफ द सेशन everybody knew about gandhi ji because gandhi ji was national hero before he came to india because whatever he has done in africa was famous he used to write and every indian used to read so he was very famous though he has not done anything significant in india but he was famous so rajkumar shukla met gandhi ji and gandhi ji se bola ki let's go and let's go to champaran and try to solve the problems of the the farmers in the champaran the farmers who are sowing the indigo indigo farmers right indigo was basically the natural dye you can see so the farmers are facing a lot of problem because of this indigo issue what are the problems the common problems we remember all the three system permanent settlement rayadwari mahalwari we have seen this is another small settlement system local settlement system that is tinkathia system in this system what was done that this is the land and 3 by 20 of the land ha they have to sow the indigo right they have to sow this much indigo in this part of their land every farmer when they have to when they when they have to sow but they are not getting the proper price for it secondly there was a competition with the synthetic dye german synthetic dye so they were not getting the high price and the 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 administration was forcing them and all these things the indigo planters was basically forcing them and the administrations favored indigo planters because the european nature so this was the context in which champaran satyagraha was fought so let us see so indigo planters in bihar tinkatiya system 3 uh, by 20 of the land should go to indigo synthetic dye rent was increased dues were increased and the prices were fixed that means the farmers did not had the freedom to sell it anywhere and sell at any price the prices were fixed by the planters so they were not getting anything and they were stuck in this indigo thing so gandhi ji along with other leaders such as rajendra prasad the first prime minister of india mahazar ul haq mahadev desai nan harit parekh and jb kriplani so all these leaders along with gandhi ji were they involved in the champaran satyagraha so the time gandhi ji arrived in india or oh, in champaran it was not these are the farmers and first at the arrival the authorities came and told gandhi ji go back right you should leave you should not go here but the gandhi ji will say why i should leave i will defy your order and say agar if you want to arrest me do arrest me i don't care but at least let me listen to the cause of the farmer what are these farmers are saying right so authority orders gandhi to leave but gandhi defied authorities later on retreated okay say okay okay fine gandhi go ahead and meet these people so gandhi ji conducted an inquiry with the help of the other leaders and gandhi ji found that these are the problems and government was convinced and they formed a committee of which gandhi was a member so as to solve the matter of this um rent now a lot of rent a lot of illegal dues were taken from these farmers for which they were protesting illegal dues that is that was a lot of money a lot of their crops for example other a, a lot, apart from the 3 by 20 area the other area in which they are sowing the crop they were taken in the lieu of the rent or the dues so a lot of illegal dues were taken from the farmers so farmers were demanding ki at least return to us these dues this is illegally taken right if the market is dying of the dyes then why are you but still why are you favoring these things so gandhi ji convinced that thin, to the british the tinkatiya system is bad and it is not favoring and ultimately both the parties came to a compromise and that was the nature of the gandhi that we have seen in africa also that is a nature of the compromise let's come to a compromise so he says that after everything that 25% of these illegal dues will were extracted will be compensated to the farmers so yes not the 100% compensation was taken up but the point was that gandhi ji was able to come up to a solution and make sure that the british authority listened to him or listened to the farmers voice within a decade you can see within a decade the planters left the area gandhi ji had won the first battle of civil disobedience so even if it was a compromise solution but it led to a change right so this is one of the things that we can take away from gandhian movement small gandhian movement beforehand so gandhi had won the first battle against the civil disobedience other popular leaders associated with the champaran satyagraha were brij kishore prasad anurag narayan sinha ram don't have to remember a lot of name remember these name rajendra prasad majwar ul haq 
सो टू टू थ्री नेम्स यू नीड टू रिमेंबर हुआ एसोसिएट विद चंपारण सत्याग्रह स्पेशली राजेंद्र प्रसाद नेक्स्ट इज द अहमदाबाद मिल स्ट्राइक सो इन नाइनटीन एटीन देर वॉज अ मिल स्ट्राइक सो देर वॉज अ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट बिटवीन मिल ओनर्स एंड द वर्कर्स इट वॉज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डिसकंटिन्यूट ऑफ प्लेग बोनस दैट अर्लियर प्लेग बोनस वॉज गिवन टू द वर्कर्स एंड इट वॉज डिसकंटिन्यूड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट देर वॉज अ लॉट ऑफ वर्ल्ड वॉर वन मिजरी सो बिकॉज ऑफ वर्ल्ड वॉर वन अ लॉट ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन वॉज देयर प्राइस राइस वर देयर एंड अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम वर देयर सो द वर्कर्स वर डिमांडिंग ये भाई एटलीस्ट हमारी वेजेस बढ़ाओ इंक्रीज अवर वेजेस सो दे वर सेंग दैट इंक्रीज अवर वेजेस बाई फिफ्टी परसेंट एंड द ऑब्वियसली द मिल ओनर्स विल से नो नो वी कैन ओनली इंक्रीज बाई ट्वेंटी परसेंट सो दिस वर्कर्स वेंट टू अनुसुआ सारा बाई हु वॉज अ सोशल वर्कर हु यूज टू यूज दिस कॉजेज अबाउट दिस लेबर्स एंड ऑल दिस थिंग सो अनुसुआ सारा बाई वॉज द सोशल वर्कर एंड द वर्कर्स मेट हिम Now Anusia Sarabhai was also the sister of the Ambalal Sarabhai. Now this Ambalal Sarabhai is one of the mill owners, so sister of the Ambalal Sarabhai. Ambalal Sara or Anusia Sarabhai approached Gandhi ji, ki bhai dekhi aaye and see the solution if that we can find the solution. So Gandhi ji said, okay, okay, I'll come and I'll see. so gandhi ji said he met the workers he found out their problem then again gandhi ji ne when he identified the problem he asked the workers to go on the strike go down on the strike he himself get on to the fast on to death his first hunger strike hunger strike was a very important weapon that gandhi ji will use throughout till the independence at the time of the independence he also got on a hunger strike abhi bhi hum dekh sakte hain anna hazare and a lot of people go on the hunger strike right so gandhian method to strengthen the workers resolve but the fast also had an effect on effect on the putting the pressure on the mill owners who finally agreed ki bhai theek hai theek hai so they some submitted those mill owners and the worker submitted the matter to the tribunal now the tribunal has said okay give them 35% wage hike again a compromise solution so the compromise solution can be seen in, not only in champaran but also in the ahmedabad mill strike understood so there was a conflict between mill owners and the workers plague bonus and the workers were demanding 50% rise mill were saying 20% rise the workers went to a social worker that is anusuya sara bhai anusuya sara bhai goes to gandhi ji ki bhai dekh lo dekh lo and gandhi ji said okay go for the strike he himself went on the strike then the matter was submitted to the then the matter was submitted to the tribunal and finally uh, 35% raise was done next is the kheda satyagraha Kheda Satyagraha was the first non-cooperation Satyagraha, first non-cooperation. So Kheda was basically there was a drought in 1918 because of which the crop failed, and the revenue code that means how much money needs to be taken from the farmers. One revenue code was there. Revenue said that if the yield is less than one fourth of the previous year, let's say previous year 100 kiloton has been produced, hypothetical example. If this time less than 25 produced, then the remission will be done of the Uh, the revenues, the revenues will be changed, but that was not changed. A lot of uh, drought was there, so they were not able to produce as much as they want. So there was a collective Gujarat Sabha, and they said that we will re- suspend the revenue. But the government was very adamant. They said, no, 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 we want revenue. Imagine the time after the World War One or during the World War One, government wanted a lot of revenue. Government said, no, 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 we cannot take up this. we you have to submit this uh, rent now what the government is to do let's say this is the farmer who is not able to pay the rent so go- the government will take away his land and will give the land to someone else who will give the revenue to the government theek hai but the land has to be bought by someone now gandhi ji ke intervened he said pay no taxes gandhi ji was merely an spiritual head or the leader was movement the major work was done by the lot of people such as sardar patel नन हरी पारेख मोहन लाल पांडे एंड रवि शंकर व्यास दो से तीन नाम रिमेम्बर सो दीज आर दीपल डोर टू डोर एंड टेल पीपल पर भाई डोंट पे दिस रेंट डोंट पे द टैक्सेस लेट देम टेक अवे अवर लैंड वॉट विल हैपन नाउ द रिवॉर्ड वॉज रिमार्कल विद डिसिप्लिन दूनिटी दैट वॉज मेंटेन इवन वेन द नॉन पेमेंट ऑफ द टैक्सेस गवर्नमेंट सीज द फार्मर्स पर्सनल प्रॉपर्टी लैंड एंड लाइवलीहुड द वॉस मेजोरिटी ऑफ द खेला फार्मर डिड नॉट डेजर्ट सरदार पटेल सो दे स्टिक विद द लीडर्स they did not say no 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 you are taking away our land so we'll pay the rent whatever you want no they led they trusted the leaders and they stuck with stood with the leaders 
the gujaratis in their part who sympathized with the cause of the revolt hai na held by sheltering the relatives and the property of the protesting peasants those who, those who are protesting they require some help let's say some land some food some place to live so the other people who are helping him those indians who will buy the land from the of the farmer from the government so if you if as an indian you buy this land we will ostracize you we'll say you have been a you have uh, collaborated with the government you are not uh, uh, working in collaboration with the peasants so go out go out go out or we will ostracize you that the same thing so on the pressure social pressure the other indians will not cooperate and if we buy this land the our fellow people will not uh, like us so obviously the government uh, was under pressure because nobody is buying the land and they are not getting any revenue so government sought to bring about an agreement with the farmer it was agreed to suspend the tax for the year in question and for the end res reduce reduce the rate in, uh, increase in the rate and return all the confiscated property so you can see the way it was dealt with and it was dealt with a very precision the struggle that khela brought a new awakening among the peasantry they become aware that they would not be free of injustice and exploitation unless until the country achieved the complete independence and also if only if and only if they maintain the unity and the unity and the trust in the leadership tick so this is the three movements of the gandhi ji first is champaran second is uh, ahmedabad mill strike and third is kerala satyagraha it is a non cooperation tick chalo so this is the three movements so gain from champaran ahmedabad and kerala gandhi demonstrated for the people the efficacy of his technique right plus ability to compromise and what is the effectiveness of compromise he found his feet among the masses and became to have the surer understanding of the strength and the weakness of the masses indian masses to be precise he acquired the respect and the commitment of many especially the youth in fact some of the books if you read the textbooks or some of the non fiction works they will say when gandhi used to travel champaran the people the far fetched people the ignorant people they used to believe that he is a miracle worker that he is a god sent prophet or something like that these things were ruled that he can heal or such things were there with respect to gandhi right so these are the gains from the champaran ahmedabad and the kheda now let's come back to indian national movement so this is the story of the gandhi that we have followed till now in the last session and a part of this session so this is the gandhian story now the story of the gandhi will merge with the mainstream national movement that we were following okay so now gandhi will enter into this now remember we talked about the home rule league and we talked about the government response government in the as a response to the home rule league is decided that okay montegu game and statement then montegu reforms have come and then on the basis of it government of india act has come if you remember we have done that so it is the policy of the carrot that we will placate the moderates and it was the policy of the carrot which helped the home rule league movement to die also because we have discussed how any basent vacillated whether to go ahead or not or the moderates were happy with the reforms which has come or at least they have responded so they were more or less happy ki kya ho raha hai with respect to policy of the carrot but the government will come up with a stick as well so now in the war time during the war time they have this defense of india act now this was an war time act if you remember this act was there also they used the same act to crush the gadrites so the object of the government was to replace the repressive provisions of this war time defense of india act by a permanent law now they say okay it's a war time act but now there's a peace time so but they like this war time restrictions of freedom of speech and expression ki bhai we liked it when you used to crush these people under the grab of this defense of india act so let's make a law which uh, make a permanent law which institutionalizes this process so they have institutionalizes this with the rowlet act suppress any discordant voice against the system so there was a strict control over the masses the government was armed with a variety of power to deal with anything authority choose to consider terrorist or the revolutionary tactics and with that idea the revolu this revolt rowlet act has come it was recommended by a rowlet commission rowlet was a british judge sydney rowlet 
who investigated the CD, who said that investigate seditious conspiracy of conspiracy of the Indian people. At that time, according to British, the Tukla Tukla gang and anti-national gang of in uh, from the perspective of the British. The Rowlett Act is also known as the Anarchical and Revolutionary Crimes Act. So remember that. Okay, Anarchical and the Revolutionary Crimes Act. Now, it's an act. It has to be passed just like normal acts in India has to be passed to Parliament. It has to pass through the legislative of that time, legislature of that time. So the all Indians in the imperial legislature, all Indians elected, have opposed this act. But yes, they were not in majority; they were in minority. So they were overruled by the official nominees. Elected member resigned in the protest. So all the elected Indian members, who include Muhammad Ali Jinnah, important, Madan Mohan Malvi, important, and Mazharul Haq, important, resigned in the protest. So all the elected members said that we will not be able to continue because this act is a draconian act, and Gandhi ji called it a black act. Some of the provisions, if you see, you can see yourself how it was a black act. it allowed the political activists to be tried without juries or even imprisoned without a trial so with that trial will keep you it allowed the arrest of the indians without the warrant on the mere suspicion of the treason imagine that you are a treasonous dharliya the success the suspects could be tried in the secrecy without the recourse of the legal help you won't get any legal help so article 39a goes out of the box special cells considering of the three court judges was to try such suspects and there was no court of appeal of the panel this panel could have accepted the evidence but acceptable under the indian evidence act the law of the habeas corpus was suspended and this is where the problem is in fact overall so many problems right so it was really a black act or really an stick by the britishers need of the rowle attack by the britishers we have discussed that they want to have the same defense of india act so once you give the power to a person right and they want to consolidate that power and that can be seen with the rowlet act chalo obviously there has to be an indian response and indian response has come in the form of the rowlet satyag there are a few more things for example when the war has ended there was an indian expectation if you remember of both extremists and the moderates that yes we have contributed we have not caused any nuisance to the british empire and when we have not caused any nuisance home rule league was more of a political education political propaganda moment when we have not caused any nuisance to the british empire they will reward us for our loyalty isn't it they should reward us for our loyalty but british brought about the rowlet act so it was a very surprise and a shock for the people so the expectation to contribute to the war effort was not considered limited montford reform the montford reform was very limited they wanted big constitutional reforms but those big constitutional reforms have not yielded any result so that is why this was a problem gandhi rowl attack gandhi himself said rowl attack was a black act called for a mass movement and then it led to the ruthless repression satyagraha sabha ruthless repression by the britishers when they called for this protest gandhi ji organized a satyagraha sabha he roped in the younger members of home rule and the pass some islamic movement was going on so include those people in our protest and they said that do these things national wide hartal fasting and prayer civil disobedience against the specific laws and court arrest so you have to do all these things in the rowlet satyagraha so obviously it's going to get some people will get violent now the masses have found the ki by direction that we need to act rather than saying just saying that it's a bad act or something like that for both rowlet and the government of india act. peasants artisans urban poor played an important part in the struggle and now the orientation was towards the masses so from class movement now it is getting transformed into the mass movement it was based upon the belief of the gandhi ji that salvation would come when the masses were awakened and become active in the politics so salvation can come only and only sorry salvation can come only and only if the masses were awakened and become active in the politics now you can see 
हाउ गांधी जी इज गांधी जी वॉन्ट कि भाई और गांधी जी बिलीव दैट द ओनली एंड ओनली विद द when the mass movement will be there then only the india can become independent or any protest should have the involvement of the masses as we have seen with the transvaal march right so this is the raulat satyagraha now satyagraha was to be launched see the date april 6 1919 but before it could be launched there was a large scale violent anti british demonstration in calcutta bombay delhi ahmedabad why is it so because subjective conditions were already there whether you call it a war time misery after world war 1 whether you call it a lot of arrest of the people without trial and without anything under the raul attack so people were unhappy overall economic means no political freedom of speech and expression and you now have a objective condition triggered by raul attack or by gandhi's appeal especially in punjab the situation was very explosive due to war time respiration force forcible requirements means that you have to get to the british army you have to serve in the british army ravage of the diseases so that army could be had to be called in april 19 saw the biggest and the most violent anti british upsurge since 19 1857 imagine since 1980 1950 the uh, the revolt of 1857 the mutiny or the first war of independence you see the biggest upsurge in the punjab the lieutenant governor of the punjab michael odayer said to it to uh, use aircraft staffing against the violent protester then the amritsar was very affected with violence indians shut down their shops and normal trade empty empty streets show the indians displeasure with the british betrayal on april 9 two leaders were captured saifuddin kichlu and the dr satyapal these two leaders of punjab were arrested right by the british officials without any provocation except that they had addressed the protest meeting and had taken it to some unknown destination under the rahul attack tick now the people were very unhappy because these two are a very loved leaders of the people this caused the resentment among the indian protester who came out in thousands on 10th april to show their solidarity with their leaders now when they came out to show the solidarity some violence pro- turned violent so police resorted to some firing so this is before jallianwala bag on 10th april itself see the ta- chronology ha huh? so raulet satyagraha announced violence start to happen some leaders saifuddin kichlu satyapal gave some speeches british have arrested them people are protesting against that arrest in that protest something violent happens right some englishman was also killed in that violence when this englishman were killed mr dyer issued a proclamation in april 13 he has forbidden the people from leaving the city without a pass from organizing demonstration or procession or assembling in a group more than 3 so he made this proclamation on april 13 itself right okay fine so you have the brigadier uh, brigadier general uh, renard dyer was a senior british officer with the responsibility to impose the martial law and restore order chalo but on baisakhi day people mostly from the neighboring village unaware of the prohibitory orders gathered in the jallianwala bag they gathered in jallianwala bag because it was also a baisakhi day so popular festival they wanted to celebrate this festival and from the neighboring village they did not know about this prohibitory orders and we will see in the hunter commission report when we'll see after it the commission report also says that mr dyer has not put this prohibitory order in a in a in a way so that ev- we expect that each and every one has seen it for example i issue some order but i just paste it outside my wall do i expect everyone else to see that no so the local leaders has also called for a protest meeting at the venue it is not clear how many people but around 20000 people were collected were were there and mr dyer arrived on the scene with his men and he said that ki bhai i have issued the pro, i have issued the martial law in this and there was only one exit point and opened fire on the anam road we all know this story no warning was issued no instructions to disturb was given and they just opened fire so many people were dead so many wounded and martial law was proclaimed in punjab public flogging and other humiliations were perpetrated 
to take just one other instance in yes were forced to crawl on their bellies down the road on which the english missionaries have been assaulted so a lot of not only the jaliawala bag that itself was a massacre but also a lot of atrocities have been caused on the indian people in the lieu of this jaliawala bag massacre so what was the indian response rabindra tagore renounced his knighthood gandhi ji got this kaiser e hind title he renounced that no right bestowed by the british for his work during the boer wars natal india ambulance corps were created by gandhi this we have seen right then gandhi was overwhelmed by the atmosphere of total violence and withdrew the movement on the april 18 1919 so satyagraha was launched 6th april or to be launched 6th april and he taken over that okay fine we cannot carry in on later on what happened in the amritsar made gandhi declared that cooperation with the satanic regime was no impossible so now he said that this satanic this regime is satanic and now there cannot be any cooperation with it now you can see the non cooperation movement background being laid out non cooperation movement he realized that the cause of the indian independence from the british rule was morally righteous and we need to get to that independence the events of the 1990 were to shape punjab politics for resistance uh, bhagat singh's uh, bharat naujawan sabha was to act as a symbol that would help overcome the apathy that came in the wake of the end of the non cooperation movement we will see that later on how this singular event jallianwala bag inspired a lot of revolutionaries as well obviously it will create a lot of uh, sense of uh, uh, the resentment the anger in the hearts of the revolutionaries or any indian for that matter yes the responses will be different depending upon individual experience individual aptitude aptitude or individual appetite to violence for example udham singh after 21 years after the jallianwala bag incident he took a revenge and he assassinated michael odoyer the lieutenant governor who presided over the british suppression of the protest in punjab and he was hanged later on so udham singh also later on 21 years after it taken the revenge same thing about udham singh so he was born in 19 1899 he was associated with the gadar party in the usa in 1934 he made his way to the london with the purpose of assassinating odoyer who in 1990 had been the governor general of the bengal he used the name of the ram mohammed singh azad which represented three major religions in the punjab and anti colonial sentiment so what kind of questions you can expect ki they will give you some lines ki this is the leader who who is who presented himself who named himself ram mohammed singh azad right who has done this 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 identify the leader so four options then you have to identify who is that individual so that is udham singh now there are two diaries just to so that confusion is not there fun fun is this reginald diary this reginald dyer was actually the, he was known as the butcher of the amritsar he was responsible for jallianwala bag massacre he was the on ground person he was the on ground person he was an indian born officer of the uh, bengal army and later substituted indian army so he was the person who was there in the jallianwala bag that day who opened fire so this is mr reginald Re- dyer he died in 1927 tick so he was not killed by udham singh udham singh killed him he was the lieutenant governor her higher authority who presided over the amritsar when the jallianwala bag massacre happened so he was not the actual person who fired or given the order of the fire but he was the authority who did that at that time when it was done so obviously it was his, his responsibility so dyer was assassinated by the udham singh so that there is no confusion within between these two diaries then obviously what was the government response so government response was okay we'll set up one committee secretary of state mr montegu said that order committee of inquiry that will be known as the disorder inquiry committee led by the mr hunter mr william hunter and known as the hunter committee or hunter commission the purpose of the commission was to investigate the recent disturbances in the bombay delhi punjab about their causes and measures taken to cope with them majorly it was done with the jallianwala bag massacre it also concluded three members so in important trivia that you need to remember that in the hunter committee there were three indians were also there names are not important but three indians were there after meeting in delhi 
so committee committee took statements for mary one dyer was called in dyer talked about that this is my responsibility uh, i think it was quite possible that i could have disturbed the crowd without firing but they would have come back again and laughed i would have made what i considered a fool of myself so all these things dyer defended himself they talked in dyer and all you can read from the pdf what were the outcomes of the meeting this is important what were there after committing all the investigation what was the thing that they have said observations keh lo outcome keh lo first they unanimously condemned dyer section right they say that dyer has overstepped the bound of his authority first he did not given any notice that i have discussed the proclamation of the banning meeting was insufficiently published you should have sent it as a pamphlet to many people like that inhuman and un british it and it has distorted the or uh, maligned the image of the british in india but they did not impose any penal and the disciplinary action importantly there was no conspiracy they said that there was no conspiracy of these people those who were arranged or those who were there in the park to overthrow the british rule innocent people were there in the crowd so hunter this dyer has done something really really horrific also before the hunter committee began its proceeding the government has passed the indemnity act so गवर्नमेंट ने अपना पहले ही दे हैव डिसाइडेड दे हैव डन दिस व्हाइट वॉशिंग कि भाई वी विल क्लियर हिम राइट सो इन डेमिनिटी एक्ट फॉर एग्जांपल व्हाट एवर बीइंग डन बाय द ऑफिसर्स वाज सीवरली क्रिटिसाइज्ड बाय मोतीलाल नेहरू एंड द अदर्स सो दे हैव ऑलरेडी सेड दैट नथिंग विल हैपन टू डायर देन नथिंग विल हैपन टू डायर ही विल नॉट गो टू जेल एट लीस्ट व्हाट अबाउट द रिस्पांस इन इंग्लैंड नाउ एट दैट टाइम सेक्रेटरी ऑफ स्टेट वाज विंस्टन चर्चिल हु वाज इन द पार्टी दैट वाज द कंजर्वेटिव पार्टी so winston churchill the no lover of indians condemned that that uh, what happened in the amritsar was monstrous the cabinet agreed with the churchill that dyer was a dangerous man and could not be allowed to continue in his post so he was guilty of the mistaken but he will be not given any job further and half pay and army pension milegi usko theek so this was done with the mr dyer that's all but dyer was not universally condemned right uh, for example a lot of we have discussed in the akali movement your mahant they have given they have honored the dyer by declaring him a sikh very very poor thing because these mahant what they used to do they used to they were a hand in gloves with the britishers in the britain itself there were a there were people in the house of lords which favored the dyer a lot of money was arranged for him Twenty-six thousand pound for Dyer, a famous contributor, was Rudyard Kipling, right? The honouring of the Dyer by the priest by Sri Darbar Sahib Amritsar was one of the reason behind the intensification of the demand for reforms of the Sikh shrines that we have discussed. Demand of the Akali movement. So it led to the Gurudwara reform movement, Udasi Mahant, and we have discussed the rest of the story. So Dyer was not universally condemned. You can imagine currently in India, someone does the violence. क्या होता है देर इज वन पार्टी हुई सपोर्टिंग हिम वन पार्टी नॉट सपोर्टिंग हिम एंड दैट हैपन इन द ब्रिटेन आल्सो कॉमेंट अबाउट कांग्रेस व्यू कांग्रेस अपॉइंटेड इट्स ओन नॉन ऑफिशियल कमेटी दैट इज द हिट कतत कमेटी दैट इंक्लूडेड मोतीलाल नेहरू सी आर दास अब्बस अब्बस तैयब जी एम आर जयकर एंड गांधी गांधी एज वेल कांग्रेस पुट फॉरवर्ड हिज व्यू दैट ही क्रिटिसाइज डायर एक्टिंग एज ए इनह्यूमन आल्सो सेड देयर वाज नो जस्टिफिकेशन फॉर इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द Martial law in Punjab. For that, you have committed so much atrocity on the people. That was the Congress view on this whole thing. So, just like we have seen that Canada has given an official apology for Komata Garu incident, but there was no apology from the British. There was no apology from the British to against this thing. for example so they should have done some apology or they should have done something but nothing miss uh, theresa may the former british prime minister there should be a former british prime minister she said that it is a shame for his scar on the british indian legacy but he stopped short of the formal apology the labor party which was relatively sympathetic to indian cause they have said ki bhai you wish we should give a complete clear full clear univocal apology for jo hua because they have killed 379 people imagine 13 people got killed in the boston and we call it a boston massacre isn't it 
and imagine there were around 400 people being killed such brutally not only not only adult men but children women innocent people they have not done anything so these people would have been killed and this is the legacy colonial legacy that britain has left behind so that would be the end of the session everyone so what we have discussed today let's quickly summarize we have talked about the in the last session we talked about gandhi story in africa we continued that story in india so brief story after that we connected gandhi with the national movement national movement what was going on home rule league movement was going on gandhi was not interested in home rule league movement and also gandhi believed that during the war time we should not create problem for the britishers after that he uh, the car carrot and the stick policy carrot they have given in the form of the government of india act the stick policy came with the uh, your rowlet act and with the rowlet act the stick policy came and the response of the rowlet act was seen in the rowlet satyagraha 6th april they have decided to organize satyagraha on 18th april it was taken back because of the huge violence which was there and one of the center of the violence was the amritsar because of the jali and the people some of the leaders uh, mr kichlu and satyapal got arrested and the people protested mr dyer imposed martial law and prohibitory order that you cannot assemble did not publish it well people got killed then jallianwala bag massacre happened then hunter committee was set up and then the congress set up its own committee so with this we finish this session for today uh, see you all in the next session next session we'll talk about the non cooperation and we'll talk about the khilafat movement and then we'll proceed see you all in the next course class bye bye for now thank you